Jeff Clubster out here, World of Concrete. We're in the Ski and Mask booth, and we're over here with the Greg Denton, and he is the uh, expert on, you know, the scan mask machine, which in my opinion is an awesome machine. I push people towards it because it's so heavy duty, and it's just a great machine. Well built, Scandinavian built, right? Built in Sweden. Built in Sweden. And um, machines you're going to be looking for as a new installer is something uh, in a line of a, a bigger machine. So Greg's going to tell you what he recommends to uh, to do your floor. So Greg, tell us uh, what you got this year or what's the newest thing? So I think the two most effective machines for prepping a garage floor would be either our 20 inch machine, which we have in 220 single phase electric, or the next step up would be a 25 and a half inch, which we can do in 220 single phase electric, or we have a 16 horsepower propane, which is my favorite because you don't have power worries, you just start up and go to work. And this is the machine right over here, right? Yeah. Yes. This is the 25 and a half inch. So the 650 is 650 millimeters. That's the width of the cutting pad. Okay. Hands down, the toughest, most robust 25 and a half machine on the market. I don't have to make any excuses. It needs next to no maintenance. Yeah. Other than change the oil, change the air filter, and then once every 400 hours, there's a V seal down inside of here that we're gonna change. Otherwise, track record is very, very, very few belts broken in 10 years. Yeah, Actually, great. this machine's been available for 12 years. Right. And it's it's almost hard to get people to believe it because you sound like a used car salesman. Right. But as a as a guy who was a contractor for 35 years, right. time's money. I don't want to spend my time fixing it. Absolutely. I want to spend my time get in, get out. So, so this, this machine, uh, they've also got a... a, a an electric version of this, which some of our contractors have just purchased. Um, what are the benefits between propane and uh, electric? So the, the the electric version of this, 220 single phase, kind of like you know a power saw. Plug it in, turn it on, use it, do it to the next day, the next day, the next day. Very very minimal maintenance. Right. Okay. But you have to have the correct electrical setup. You've got to have the cords. Things like that. The reason that I like propane is because I can roll this right out of my trailer, right? Hook it up to the vacuum, and go to work. And have that floor prep by 11 o'clock. I I will be in and out of there so fast that you're gonna go. Wow! I, now what do I do? Yep. Go get another garage, man. Yeah. <laughs> no kidding. Go grind another one. Right. Right. So uh, this machine is in the area of what MSRP? Uh, round figures, 21. 21, so you're right in there and competitive with everybody else. And uh, the, the controls on this thing are, uh, are what? So, pretty simple setup. It has a water tank, so you turn your water on here if you're working wet. I know you guys don't work wet, so don't anybody panic. I'm not suggesting that you do. Absolutely. Okay. Key switch. Plug your phone in. Be able to, where's the cup holder? There's no cup holder. Well, right that we, we, that's on the big machine. Okay. All right. Yep. So, uh, throttle throttle, throttle control, yep. Yeah. Propane yeah. down below. Propane vapor tank right now. Yeah, we got a nice big uh, rear exit for the... Uh, for the yeah, for your back hose. The back hose. So, batteries contained down there in the box. Okay. The simple maintenance of this is every 100 hours, change the oil. Right. Okay. Every 200 hours, change the oil filter. Yeah. Every 200 hours, change the air filter. Right. Now, if you're smart, every couple days, you just take the cover off this, you take your vacuum, you put a little brush on the end of it, and you vacuum out the air cleaner. Absolutely. Because when it comes to a propane machine, the critical thing is we want to keep the air fuel ratio that we have intact. Because right. if this gets dirty, then your air ratio goes down and your fuel mixture gets more rich. And then this little safety device here starts blinking and telling you, oh, you got a problem. Yeah. But if you ignore it like you do the check engine light, yeah. it just turns around and, and hits this fuel lock off and it shuts the machine down. Yeah, I mean, you know, remember what environment you're working in. The, probably the dustiest environment anybody can ever work in. So like I always tell you, in the training programs, keep this machine looking just like this 
all the time and you'll never have any problems with it, right? And then the other maintenance issue is every 400 hours there's a V-seal in here we're going to change. Yep. It's pretty simple. And comparatively, these machines are way less maintenance. The, the, the maintenance on the 650 has such a good track record that most time when I tell people, they're like, yeah, right, you're a used car salesman. No. As I said, I'm an ex-contractor, and now that I'm an older ex-contractor, I don't want to spend too darn much time, you know, either fixing it or, oh my God, I need a part. Right? So we do keep parts in the U.S., but if, if for some reason you needed something that we don't, you know, it, I can get it here in three days from Sweden. Excellent. So. And you guys are out of, uh, you have a distributorship, or well, quite I a have, few here in uh, Colorado. I, I have a warehouse in Seattle, one in Colorado, and one in North Carolina. Yep, so even though so, it's a Scandinavian machine in Sweden, they are 100% behind them and, and serviceable here in the United States, obviously. And uh, I just love the, I know quite a few contractors using the 650 electric. And I really appreciate this machine as well because I'm kind of pushing everybody towards simplicity and, and speed. So, and then what do we have over here? We have the 500. You're oh, going to tell you, me about? If you wanted to drop down to a little bit smaller machine, the 500 PD here is a 20 inch uh, electric 220 single phase. And one of the nice things with the amp draw on this, there's a device called a quick 220. I have one. And technically, it's a called it's called a cleaver, but you plug into two separate 110 circuits. Yeah. 20 amp single phase, 220 output. Run this thing all day long. Right. So, you know, it's easy, but still, this is a 350 pound machine. It's not like a little toy. Right. Absolutely. But it's a true forced planetary. Yeah. So it's plenty aggressive. We've got an adjustable weight set on it because. You know, if you got super soft concrete, maybe you don't want as much head pressure. Absolutely. If you've got some harder concrete, maybe you want to increase the head pressure. So for the smaller one, you know, our diamond line, we make four bonds. We do hard, medium, soft, and super soft. Yep. Typically on the smaller platform like this, I might have you run a single bar diamond instead of a double because you need the head pressure. So you, by get, a, the same so you token. get a single on this one, probably. Yeah, probably. More but, you know, depending upon if your concrete's a little bit soft, you may still want to run a double because you're going to spread that weight out a little yep. bit more, right? And always, guys, test your concrete with a Mohs tester for the diamonds. You're going to consume way less, and you're going to have spend a lot less money on diamonds if you properly test your concrete, right? Always. Absolutely. So you've got a full line of diamonds, of course, that are still made in Sweden. Yes, but no. Not all of them? There's a few that are from Europe, but no, most of them are made uh, either Korea or China. But I, but I know that they're a higher but, quality but, diamond. But here's the thing. The guy who owns the factory is a friend of mine, and I hold his feet to the fire all the time. Right, okay? right. I know so they're great diamonds. We, we have worked hand in hand with them because we build great machines. Right. So we always talk about you know, it's important for us to sell the consumable because, you know, we build a great machine, but guess what? This thing, you're not going to buy another one in, you know, maybe five years if you just say, gee, I'm tired of it, I want to get a new one. So we got you, these out there at 10 years old, so I'm not making any money if you're not buying my diamonds. You never find any of these on resale because nobody gets rid of them. Nobody gets rid of a 500, nobody gets rid of a 650. Right. I talked to a homeowner yesterday. He said, I want to buy one of these to polish my floor what do you think my odds are of selling it when I'm done? I said, you call me up, I'll have it sold before I hang it. <laughs> Nobody ever sells a 650. Absolutely. Yeah. They're just beautiful machines. They're well made, they're well engineered. And can you carry this thing down to the basement? What's the weight on this head? So if you want, you separate the frame set from the motor and the planetary. It's got handles on it here. Get some piano I recommend straps. I recommend two guys because it you know I've done strap, it but you get uh, the piano strap. Well you can do that, but I mean yeah. you know two 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 of these young guys, heck they can pick that thing up and carry it down the stairs. Absolutely. So it's great if you're gonna do a basement because you can rip the thing apart easily and away you go. So the difference between a big machine and a small machine for production rate. What would you you know, obviously you're giving me a lawn mowing, you know, uh, scenario. Uh, 
you know, that's a, a question that honestly I can't necessarily say, oh, on this you can get X number of feet. If you go to our website, I think we've got some information on there. But, but I here. always caution people that, you right. know, the person that put that statistic out there, you know, it, it, it might feel a little inflated. So, right. you know. So, I mean, as far as a small grinder versus a big grinder, you're getting more square feet per hour because it's wider. So you're cutting more. Right? Well, so with the 650, you have a lot more weight. You have a lot more weight and horsepower with the 650. How much does that weigh? 650? So, so this is 350 pounds, 350. Give, or, give or take, right? right? That's double. Yeah, That's way more. 750. 750 pounds. That thing's a kiss and buy. So, but yet the balance of that machine is so good that my 10 year old grandson can push it all day long. Right. It's like, you know, it's actually easier to push than your lawn. Yep, and with these good high quality machines, folks, you won't believe how much smoother they are and, and better to operate than something that's gonna be shaking your body all day long because the balance isn't correct. And you know, like this machine right here, for instance, you would you'd probably be on the floor for what, 10 minutes? Oh, that's, yeah, that's the ultra beast there. The, yeah, this is an 800? This what is, is this? A, it's, a, it's a 32 inch. Yeah. That weighs 1,390 pounds. Yep. So if you have the floor that nobody can cut, we can cut it. They'll hire you to come in and cut <laughs> it and pay you for it, but this is what we want to, you know, move towards, you know, when you get into big floors and commercial, you pick up one of these and there's nothing you won't be able to cut. You know, so anyway. Well, hey man, and then of course the diamonds, we have over here, they've got a great selection of diamonds. Um, and always, like I said, test the